we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Living Father, thank you that you have loved me the most. May you become my God. May the relationship between you and I be right and may we receive all the promised blessings. As your son, may we live without shame. May our descendants do well. We believe that tomorrow will be better. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding and prudence, may these overflow. Father, we thank you for giving us realizations through the word. May we act completely to become righteous and may we receive the blessings for our descendants do well. May we become a blessed man who can share with others and for our country and our people, may we become a blessed man who can pray for them and may we be acceptable to your will which is to be an instrument of righteousness. We believe that we will receive the blessings for all things. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's greet the person next to us. Let's receive even better blessings. Let's receive 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 better blessings. The education branches, please receive these blessings. So if you tell others to do well, who does well? Me, my children do well. And if that other person says amen, they will do well together. So believing in Jesus is for us to do well together, to genuinely wish others to do well. That is the heart of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, it says to have the heart of Jesus Christ. When has Jesus cursed us? When does Jesus Christ ever done wrong to us? But these people who say they believe in Jesus, all they do is gossip and slander and they tear each other down, bite each other. There's something so wrong. It's because they've worn their clothes in reverse. So these people who say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but why is that? I'm, I keep not doing well. Well, the people who are caught up in this today receive this key. We will surely receive a key today. Isaiah. So, you know, past your 60s, there are lots of good things. So chapter 64. You know, when you see how God gives, even the chapter and the verse, it's God is so good. Verse 8. Why is it chapter 64, verse 8? Because we have to fix our destiny. So then if you still forget the chapter and verse, that's, you know, awkward. So Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Let's read it together. But now, O Jehovah, you are our father. We are the clay and you our potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. Amen. So the word that God gives us, I'll look at it again. But now, O Jehovah, you, the Lord, who is it? So our Father, that's very wide. So it has to become my father. So if it's our father, you know, you know, you start arguing with your spouse because you're like, oh, you, you believe well first. But when it's my, when it's our father, it's all of us. But it has to become my father, your own father. That's Psalms 144 verse 15. That's when you become a blessed man. So. If, if that country, the country's people are like that, that is a blessed people. That's verse 15. So, he is our, the Lord is our Father and we are the clay. So, our Father is the potter and all of us are the work of your hand. Do you believe this? So, what does this mean? So my father, so you, me, my father, he loves us the most. He wants us to become the best person. And that's why he's creating us as this 
as this dish. Do you believe this? When you make a dish, someone with a lot of suffering, that that becomes a, a high quality product. The more you smash it, so if you just smash, it, crush it roughly, if you just ground ground grind it roughly if it's just ground roughly then it's you, you can't be anything but a roof tile but something like this you have to crush it till it's powder you know overseas if you go overseas you have to be crushed like fine powder so if you have a lot of suffering what are you going to become you feel sorry to say it don't you so we will do well. Today we will receive this blessing. So let's read this verse again. Who is the Lord? Why didn't you say God? It's He's my Father. Let's read again. But now, O Jehovah, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. Amen. Do you believe this? So what does your father do? He's the almighty Jehovah. So you need to answer confidently. I don't know if there's something still between you, but he is our father and he is a potter. So he will create us to be the best quality. Do you believe this promise of love? Who does he love us more than? So you know well. And so he's given us a promise. Let's find Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. This is the promise he gives us. So we're going to read Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. So that's when you realize someone as filthy as me, this is what he's given to me. Every time you look at each Bible verse, you say, Lord, Lord, but... It seems like someone else's, you know, father, but he's my father. This is so good. The saints. You know, I'm just a slave. You're at least, you know, a slave with a sir attached. But when I see how he's going to fix my destiny so I can become a son, you know, these wealthy families, so from today, if he's, if they said, oh, from today you can become my son, you'd be like, oh my gosh. But Almighty God's saying he wants to make you his son and you're like, you're like, huh? So even if something's too big, you can't see it. And even if it's too small, you can't see it. You can't see something, you know, that's stuck on your own self, but you can't see something very far off either. So this is something that is so thankful. What what worth do we have? But he says, you're my son. How thankful. So if we're his son, does he just leave us alone? No, he says he'll make us to be the into something so good. He says, you are the clay. So from what age? Do we, you know, make things like from kindergarten? So why? So that we will know our father. But which teacher has taught them it's so that we'll know our father? But that's what he's telling us. So we will fix our destiny. According to this word, it will happen. So Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Let's read it together. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So when we were sinners, who is it that died for my sins? Was it Jesus? So now you know how to read it properly. If you can't realize this, if someone asks who died, you have to look at it again. You know, it's like after you cry and cry and, they say, and then you're like, oh, who died? You know, after you cry, why, 
you know, what's, it's, it's too late to ask who died. So it's when we were sinners that Christ died. While we were still sinners, Christ who died for me. Why? So because of his son's death, he's proving his love. So he who loves us this much, he is our father. Do we believe this? So today the Lord, the Father, so when we say who is the Lord, you know, you wonder where is, where is he? Do I have to climb up a ladder? No, he's my Father. And what's, what's he want to do for you? He wants to make you into the best. And so he has proved his love. Do you believe this? It will happen according to your faith. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. So if you believe that he loves you, he will make you like that. Pastor, why is it? You say that if you do forced our repentance, you say, you know, you say that we'll do well. It seemed like we did well at the beginning. These days, you know, the military ac academies aren't, you know, that great. But before, you know, people would think it was so good to get into military academy. But a little while later, they'd be like, oh, it's too hard. Well, they're happy to enroll, but then they're training so hard. Why? So that you can become, you know, a diamond. Uh, you know, boot camp, you can't do that well. So the Lord, so as my father, so he wants to make me into the highest quality because I'm clay. So to do that, you have to be smashed to the finest powder. If you're caught up in this, as you're doing four step apprentice, you come here and you're like, why is this so hard? Do you believe he's making you into the top quality? So you're suffering now. Let's find Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Your present suffering, if you just be patient for it, then it's not going to compare to the glory that will soon be. So those people who do forced their repentance a little, they're like, you know, we're supposed to be doing well. Why is it I've just got sweat on my brow? Why is why are things more difficult? No, you're doing well. A patient or someone with a problem when they come here, if they're praying and yet they nothing's happening, that's 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 you know, that's really hard. But those people where it seems like you're not doing well and then things start floating up, you know, that's that's doing well. If you're suffering outside of Christ without faith, that's God pulling you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, that's the suffering. He gives you so much difficulty. But if that person comes inside of Christ and they're doing four-step repentance, oh, pastor, why am I not being released? Well, that's because you're becoming you know, high quality. So how thankful. You know, when I'm caught up, when I was caught up in, you know, God making me into something so high quality, no one had taught me this. At the beginning, it seemed like this was good. You know, it was good that I'd entered into military academy. But then soon he's telling me to run around so that I've got fire on my back. My feet are on fire. You know, I'm sweating so much, the engines, you know, churning. It's the engines pumping. If you're running around a lot like that, that's what happens. But that was him making me into a diamond. Why is it I'm doing false yet repentance but I have difficulties? He's making you into something deluxe. It, 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 in the present state, you're, you're going to be nothing but earthenware. If you look at broken earthenware, there's bits of sand in there. Why? Because it was just ground roughly. So it can't become something that is so fine. This, something like this, you have to smash it till it is powder. Do you believe this? Do you want to become deluxe? Do you want to succeed? Do you want to do well? Then he's making you smashed into a powder. It's because God loves you. Who is he? He's my father. My father. He kills his own son to prove that he loves me. So if you're doing forced rep repentance and you're not doing well, why is this? It's so that you will endure and you wait with thanksgiving so that you become completely smashed and you'll become the best. Let's read 
For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Amen. So the suffering that we're receiving now, it doesn't compare to the future glory. What is this glory? So if you are suffering this this short suffering, when you first do forced to open, it seems like you're doing well. And then you're like, it's strange, I keep getting difficulties. So a moment ago, so I went up and I washed all the sweat off and then I changed my clothes. And then I was so tired, I just I just collapsed spread eagled. And I was like, Lord, and I'm repenting as I'm collapsed there. And I said, Lord, there's something that's wrong. If I can't remember things that I've done wrong, please forgive me and please help me to remember so that I can properly ask you forgiveness. Please give me realization. So as I'm repenting, it's been about 10, 20 minutes that have passed. And I get more and more tired, and my body's now sticking to the ground. You know, I'm. And I'm completely sapped of energy. So the saints um, and all those brothers of faith all over the world, he teaches me who has a problem. He, he gives a sign. So there's a car. It was the same in Korea. So when a car crashes, there was just one light. That um, that was broken and happened exactly. So this car's c- coming toward, and when I look at it, it's on the left, the left wheel, on the ground. There's there's a little hole in the ground, and a person's foot is caught in that hole. So if, if you just pulled it out, there'd be no problem. But the driver is going, thinking that that foot's going to, they're going to pull their foot out. But they don't. They're, they're not able to. It's stuck. And so they get run over. So I see that. In that moment, I see that. So if you have a relationship with God, all those people that are related to you, all those many people, he shows this so that you will intercede for them. If you're spiritual, he gives this to you. But you know what is so sad? If this pa- if this pastor, if I repent thoroughly, God blocks it. However, you have to also be someone who is in Christ. That's how you receive blessings. Outside of Christ, they get hit. So here I am lying down and that scene comes to my eyes. And I say, Lord, forgive us. Please block this disaster. And I'm praying, even with my energy sapped. And then what the Lord says is, how are you repenting? And I'm lying down. Oh, Lord, please first forgive. And then I get up because this is urgent. At that moment, someone later will witness in that one minute. Do you know how urgent it is in that one minute? So the pastor gets shown these disasters so many times. You know, I just leave whatever I'm doing. I just, you know, if I've been collapsed with all my strength, I'll turn over. And so then he'll tell me to kneel. So then I kneel. And you don't know, you know, I repented many times. And it's when my heart was at peace. If my heart's at peace, that's when God's heard me. And then I collapse and I lie down again. As a pastor, this happens so many times, even as you're sleeping. Do you know how many times these things come? But with that prayer, those disasters are blocked. So he wants to to use you as something this high class. That's why you're being trained. So to intercede for others. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. And then to be someone who knows other people's situation. That's to have counsel. So in order to make you into a person like that, that's why he's training you. But you say, you reject this, you refuse it, saying, oh, I'm so irritated. This present suffering doesn't compare with the future glory. What is this glory? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5, what is that? To know what's in someone's heart, to know what's in the future, that is counsel. Shamans, fortune tellers, these evil spirits in other religions, if you seek them out, you'll get worse disasters because God won't leave you alone. God's calling you, but if you go the opposite way, you're left in the pig pen, you'll ruin your life. So this 
present suffering. You may think it's so long. I used to think it was long. But when you pass it, it's so short. So that future glory, it cannot be compared. This glory is for me to go to heaven. It's for me to overflow with joy. It's for me to be happy. Everything that I do, my desires are fulfilled. And not just for me. It goes down a thousand generations. And then to share it with others, that is glory. So to receive glory from God, this is something so incredible. If you don't receive this glory and you try to evangelize, you're a fake. And that's why Philippians chapter 3 verse 3 says, if you don't receive the Holy Spirit, you cannot do service. It's after you receive the Holy Spirit and then you evangelize. That is true evangelism. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. So you suffering, it doesn't compare to the future glory. This glory, it's where you'll be joyful in all things. In all things, you'll do well. That's to go to heaven. That's where a thousand generations do well. And to share this with others so that others too can receive this. That is glory. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 33. So to receive something this amazing. So firstly, I have to receive suffering and be trained. Where? Well, God gives this in Christ. So your father, my father wants to make me to someone like this. That's why he's training me. So if you're doing forced to repentance and you receive this suffering, you have to be thankful in all things. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, because he's making you into the highest quality. So if you have suffering, you, you're you wanting to avoid it. When Jesus bore the cross, he wanted that cup to be taken away. But God had promised this incredible glory. So your present suffering, it doesn't even compare to Jesus's. If you had to take up the cross, then there'd be two Jesus's. But our suffering is for me to fix my destiny, for my children to do well, and to become someone who can relay it to others. A servant of power, where if you bless others, they'll be blessed. That's why he gives you this suffering. Why? So that he'll become your father. You become his son. And to receive, verse 17, let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 17. So if you are my son, then you have to suffer to receive an, in an inheritance. Let's re read together. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Amen. So with whom? Isn't it Jesus? So now you understand. So this gospel, if you realize and you change your clothes and you live a right faith, even if there was no Bible, if God works within you, you'd, you'd be able to write it exactly. I said this 10 years ago. You may have scoffed then, but as you realize each, each moment, you realize, oh, now I know what goes in here. You know exactly. So to become a child of God, that is faith. Galatians chapter 3. Let's find this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. So for him to become my father and for me to become his son, that is faith. So you say that you believe, but you think, you know, a son is something completely different. No, faith is to be a son. If you're a son, then God, he creates me into something that is high quality out of this clay. So we will do well. This short suffering, this present suffering, be thankful for it. The greater the suffering, that dish, that high quality dish grows bigger. You know, if you say, oh, I just ended within three days, then you're just a little small dipping bowl, you know, a little sauce bowl. You know, maybe if you ate, you know, frequently from there, you'll be full. But if you're something big, you know, for many, many days, you know, you can you be fed. So whether it's this way or that way, it's thankful. Does that mean you're always going to stay forever in this as this dish? No, he makes you like this. And after using a little bit, he breaks you and uses you in a greater way. Pastor, it seems like I'm doing well, but then why is it like this again? Yes, when you're a little sauce bowl, now you've got to be something greater bigger so if you want to be made to something bigger let's say amen but then as soon as you're given something uh, 
You know, you ask, where's that deacon gone? I don't know. You know, this they've got a disease. No, they don't have a disease. They've fallen into a trial. So this is how much God loves us. You know, he loves us even more than his own son, Christ, because he proved his love by killing his son. So you suffering, it seems like suffering, but it's with Christ. So as we think of Christ and we win over this, then we will win unlimitedly and we will become the best blessed man, an instrument of righteousness. How good is this? And that's why James chapter 1 Verse 2, it says, if you have trials, you be completely thankful. But you don't want to do this. Why is it I'm doing forced therapy and I get these things? That's how you grow. Who is the father? You'll probably say, you know, you may buy some ingredients and you make something small. And then, and then, and then if you see something bigger, you'll just break it and then you'll make it, you know, something bigger. So the owner, even people do this, but the owner, my father, the almighty one, he will do it in the best way. So if you're just doing forced out repentance and you're receiving suffering, it's for you to fix your destiny soon. Your destiny will be fixed. It does not compare to the future glory because I am his son. He wants me to become someone who can receive everything. That's why he gives me suffering. Don't forget this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Let's read it together. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. So what is faith? It's to become a son of God. If you're a son of God, what happens? Well, you have to, be, you have to receive training. With whom? With Christ. So without forced out repentance, you cannot become a son. Because you're not a son, you can't be with Christ to receive training. So how pitiful is that? Even though you suffer, you need to suffer inside of here. That's when you become an heir of God, a prince. Otherwise, you just suffer for nothing and there's you've got nothing left. So let's be thankful that we're suffering in Christ. So why is it that God gives us suffering when we're doing four-step repentance? To surely make us do more well. But it doesn't just end there. So within this suffering, as you're, uh, as you're receiving this training, he makes me anew. It seems like suffering, but this training afterwards, you have to go past this phase of receiving the fire of the Holy Spirit. So yes, as you make this new dish, it looks like a dish, but you can't use it because when you pour water into it, it would, the, the, the clay will swell. So it's got to be put in the furnace. It's got to be put into that fire. So if you've been crushed into a powder, and then you you made into the dish. You become like this, a, like a rock. So you become one heart. You become one. So then, once you receive the Holy Spirit, you have to receive baptism. So you have to cut off all that you've done this far. You have to give up. You have to throw everything away. That past life. That's when. That's when that whole, the fire of the Holy Spirit comes. And that's when all my thoughts and theories are used for evangelizing. And in front of the Father, all there is is this new dish, this new creation. That's what receiving the Holy Spirit is. So when you get to this stage, so just like when a child's growing, they're clumsy and, you know, uncoordinated, you know, all these things happen. So I'm going to witness to you. All of a sudden, something that's normal, it's fine. It starts to hurt one, two months. And then that bone, if it was too thick in the world, they would look at that bone and say, you don't look very blessed. Well, he gets rid of that. If it's too thick, he makes it thin. Or if it's too thin and you don't look blessed, he'll make it thick. So if your bones are hurting, as you're doing forced heart repentance, you'll experience this. And he changes your bones. In the world, they may say, oh, that person, oh, they've got such a rough and menacing impression. That's right. That's right. But in front of God, if you do forced heart repentance, he changes you. When he changes you, so you say, I've got high blood pressure, low blood pressure. It all becomes normal. He even changes your bones. And when that happens, you'll receive some suffering. Sometimes you can't even sleep. So if you're just repenting as you can't sleep and you say, Lord, you, I believe you are making me to the best quality dish. And then he will change you. 
all those pains, they'll disappear. All those things that shouldn't be, he'll make it into better. And so my bones, I, you know, I'm a witness. He's made them thicker, thinner. It's happened for the, some of the other saints too, but even that, that's what he gives to you. So he's almighty. Things that are unimaginable, he does it. He's almighty. In other words, if someone doesn't look blessed, he'll change that. So after you do foster repentance, your face starts to become bright. People say you've changed. So when you receive this blessing, there does seem to be suffering in your body. But afterwards, when it passes, we believe you'll become better. It's, so after doing forced repentance, you'll receive such surprising things. Why? Because you are the son of the Almighty God. You're an heir. You're an heir. So if you're an heir, there's nothing that you should be lacking. That's why he gives you this suffering. And within that suffering, you learn something. And that's why Joseph, if he stayed underneath his parents, he would be spoiled. You know, they adored him. But... God, he gives him a scholarship. You know, he makes his brothers sell him. That's, that's the scholarship. So he received this gift and then he goes and he's working in the field for Potiphar. That seems like suffering, but as he suffers, he learns so much. This is a special tutoring at Potiphar's house. He, lo- he received the most, most special education, t- you know, personal coaching. And then because he was with God, even though he had to, to go to the point of death, he became governor. So us receiving this training, that is the suffering in Christ. This present suffering doesn't compare to the future glory. God who was giving you such incredible things, don't forget to be thankful. So because you don't know this, you're like, I'm doing four step repentance. Why do I have difficulties? If you stay in that state, you'll always be this dish. Just receiving one bowl of rice where only you can eat. That's all you can be. You have to grow. So after you receive, you can share with others. If you just leave it there, it's going to rot. If it rots, it's hard to clean up. So earlier than later, just give it away. So that's why someone who is generous to others is blessed. A free giver, someone who freely gives is blessed. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. So if you're doing forced repentance, with inside of him, he makes you the best. So why is it? it this doesn't compare to the future glory. Well, he, it's so that... So why, why, do, why do fathers make their sons study? So... Not to suffer, but to do well. So Almighty God wants me to do well in the very best way. So as you're doing forced repentance and receive suffering, give thanks. Let's find James chapter 1, verse 2. This is how you should give thanks. But then some people, it's so regretful. They're like, uh, you know what? I don't want to become an officer. And they go home. It's when I see that, it's so sad. They say they want to become some military officer, but after one day of training, they go home. They go home. Why? To eat an ice cream from their fridge. And you see they're lying down with diarrhea. <laughs> but that's why they leave. You know, they, you know, if they received a bowl here and they ran around, they digest. But you need to, you need to, you need to be patient and endure and receive everything. Let's receive verse two. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. So all sorts of trials will come. You know, there, there's no exception. There's various trials. And it'll come in all sorts of forms. It might be your work, your business. It's all various things. But he says you be patient and endure and you be victorious. And so if you can fulfill this completely, then three and four will happen. Let's read it. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. You and I, within these sufferings, for us to become a dish, you know, you're like, it's enough just to be smashed into powder. Why else do I, why do I have to suffer even more? Well, it doesn't end with just being this dish. It's your soul spirit reviving. Once you're in that fire, with that trial, and you're, and that, that, and once this, 
has its perfect result. Let's read four again. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. So do you believe that you will become complete and perfect if, you're, if you endure? So to become complete, let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. This only happens in Christ. What happens in Christ? You receive your soul spirit. Let's read together. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Amen. He's going to make you the best, excellent person in Christ. He calls you to make you complete, perfect. So to endure to the end. This patience is what makes me complete. So it's by Christ. It's by Christ. He makes you like that. To those who endure, what will he make you into? If you just stay this dish, you know, as a creation, so if you just suffer without becoming, with, if you're not in Christ, then you're just a beast. Because even a beast, a dog, pig, has a soul. So because God's created us, God created us to have a soul and spirit, but beasts only have a soul. So for us to endure and to be trained, why? So that I can receive my soul and spirit. Let's find Luke chapter 21 verse 19 so why do we endure so that our soul spirit will live so if you live as a beast that's useless but to for your soul spirit to live so you can become a son of god that's why you need this patience so so let's read so receiving the Holy Spirit is to receive your soul spirit. Let's read verse 19. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. So you need Christ, patience. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. Christ is patience. You need Christ. In Christ, you'll become complete. That's when you receive your soul and spirit, which is your life. So you need spirit. Uh, you need patience to obtain this. So at church, someone without patience, they're a demon from the start. They don't. Demons don't have patience. They do whatever they please. So even in the world, someone who doesn't change, who is steadfast, that's what they like. These people who go back and forth to church, you can see they're going to suffer because they're on the side of a beast. They can't go the way of being becoming a child of God, an heir. It's this patience, this endurance that I gain my life. So it's not my endurance. It's only in Christ that you can endure. So there's suffering when you're crushed into powder. Then there is this suffering when you go inside that fire. And that's when you become a person. So he wants you to become his heir, to give you all things. That's Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, he wants to give you all things. But because you can't endure, you just do whatever you please. You see these people who end like that? They, they didn't do forced out repentance. If you do forced out repentance, it's not you that endure. It's in Christ. God makes you endure. That's when you'll fix your destiny. You will receive the blessings of an heir. What are these blessings? That's why Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. You receive incredible things. You receive all things. So let's receive this and have this spiritual authority and to bless others in this world. Don't you want to live like this? But those without patience, they're on the side of a beast. A beast cannot endure. If they're hungry, they'll just jump over the fence and eat anything. A beast cannot control over themselves. A man knows that how to have self-control because it's in Christ that you can endure. So in Christ is a man, outside of Christ is a beast. And that's when you get, so you have to, so you will gain this, your life. So that's when you do forced out repentance, when you endure. So it's through suffering you receive all things. You receive all the blessings of being a son. So if you do forced out repentance and something comes, you fix your destiny. You're going on the way to receive blessings. So go with joy in all things. Give thanks. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Let's read Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. 
Amen. So Jesus has received everything. And to those who are heirs, who endure, he gives this all. So spiritual authority, material authority, all things where you can fix people's diseases, then you have to endure. You have to endure this suffering. That's when you receive all things. And then it's God who makes you complete and you will even receive your soul spirit. So you need to have patience. In order for you to have patience, he puts you into the fire. And then this clay becomes like stone. When it's first clay, it's not like this. It will just it will break. You, after you become like a stone, like rock. How hard is this now? How precious? So do you want to become someone who is excellent? Well, then if you have suffering and forced to repentance, give joy or complete joy. That's when God will make you into this. So when you do force your repentance, you have suffering. There is no loss. As soon as you come here, you fix your destiny. How, how thankful is this? But so it seems like suffering, but in Christ, is it suffering or joy? You know, you don't even know the time is passing. You can endure unlimitedly. Why? In Christ, you receive comfort. Let's find Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. This is a blessing you receive. So other people may say it's suffering. In worldly terms, it's suffering, but it is joyful. It is so good. You look at people who don't do well, they do the things not to do well. You see, as they come to and fro from church, you can see, oh dear, you're someone who starts to make something and then you break it. You make it, you break it. So your whole life, you don't even become a dish. Do you know why? Because they're not doing four-step repentance. They start to and then they don't. If you continue to do it without you realizing he makes you endure. And within that endurance, you become a complete person. And that's when you receive all blessings. So let's do well. So without, without your soul spirit, how can you go to heaven? But without endurance, you can't receive your soul spirit. So it's because you don't have patience. That's why you fight and you bite each other and tear each other down. You need to have endurance to receive your life, your soul spirit, to find yourself. To find yourself, you need to find your soul spirit. Without forced repentance, there's nothing. Let's read together. That their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. So the mystery of God, if you realize Christ, you, you your heart is comforted. So it's so good. You don't even know the time's passing. He gives you all wealth. It's so good. And then verse 3, he gives you wisdom and knowledge. He gives you all the hidden treasures. So you don't even know the time is passing. This lacking person, as I'm repenting, I look back and it's been more than 10 years and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I should have, you know, I should have done all these things 10 years ago, but because the time, I don't even know the time's going because God's making everything so good. I didn't know that 10 years had passed. It seems like yesterday, but that's how it just passes. If something's so good, you don't even know the time's passing. I'm sure if you're if you're enjoying your time, you're like I can't, I can't believe the time's just flown by. It's not where things are so difficult and you're like oh I can't stand it. No, it's so good. If you do force your repentance because it's so good, you don't even realize you're enduring, and within that endurance, you become complete. You gain your soul spirit, and what God's given to Jesus, gives, Jesus gives to us everything, and so. Um, as we pray, these miracles happen and we will give glory. So in Christ, these these sufferings will come, These, but it doesn't compare to the future glory. This is such a good promise. So whatever difficulty, what is so hard? Ah, he's making me into the highest quality. So from now on, difficulties is making me into a better highest quality with this state now you're not going to become the highest quality so let's not forget this let's say i am the highest quality some people are smiling as they, as they say this you know before they were like this now they're smiling you have to be like this from the start so our suffering doesn't compare to the future glory romans chapter 8 verse 18 so Romans chapter 8 verse 18 so it's to be re-energized Romans chapter 8 verse 18 we will do well so what suffering do you have now it doesn't compare to the future glory 
You say something's happened in your household. Oh, you're going to receive blessings. We will do well. We will truly do well. Joseph, when he went to someone else's house and he was a slave, what kind of suffering would he have had? But that was for him to become governor. It was such a special tutoring. And it was for free. We will do well in the best way. Suffering is blessings. Why is it I believe in Jesus and I have suffering? Now it's gone. It's finished. God is giving you the best blessings. My Father, He is the potter. I am the vessel that He creates. Let's not forget this. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. So the Lord, the Lord, you thought the Lord was somewhere else, but he's my father, my father, my father, he's my father. But those who go to church fakely, they say he's not my father. So because he's not their father, they're always being hit and, you know, all the good things end up going to his sons and all you get to hear is someone else eating. And so you get angry. So now I have to eat because he's my father. I too have a fleshly son. Sometimes he just comes in without even knocking. Other people are waiting outside. You know, you know, a son, they can just do whatever they please. You're a son. And then later, you think the Lord, the Father, they're different things? No, He's my Father. He makes things work out the best way for me. So why would He give me suffering? The Lord is my Father. Why does He give me problems? To make me into the highest quality. He, he will do according to your heart. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. L our hearts, let's have a heart that we're going to do well in, our, in front of our Father. No matter what happens, to give all joy. Don't forget James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's read Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. But now, O Jehovah, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. Amen. So here, when he says our, it's for anyone. Everyone who does force state repentance, you can do well. Anyone. So, but he has to become my father. It's my father who makes things do well. So let's say, my father for my sake. So we believe he, we will do well. So if you have this heart, God, he's responsible for what we say. He says, all you do is say it. And it's the Father who will be responsible. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. It will happen exactly. So there is no suffering for us. This suffering in Christ is even more joyful. How much does God love us? Let's not forget this. This Father is my Father. It's so that I will do more well. There is no suffering. Good things are coming. Even better things are coming. We will, sh we will surely do well. Let's all pray. My Father, Lord, we say that we're doing four-step repentance. At the beginning, it seemed good, but after a little while, why do we have these bad things happening? No matter how much I look at you, you're lacking in becoming my heir. You need to receive training. I'm going to make you even better. So f to become my Father, where He makes everything do well. He says, you have all joy. If you endure to the end, he will make you complete, where you will gain your soul spirit. And it won't even compare to the future glory. We give thanks to this promised blessing, this dif difficulty to be able to endure unlimitedly by forced out repentance in Christ, to receive comfort in our hearts, to become united in love, and to receive all wealth so that we can endure without limits. We believe we will receive the best blessings. We believe we will become an amazing heir of God in order to receive these blessings. That's why the potter, your father, your, your owner, your master, he wants to make us in the best, into the best dish. 
Even if we have to be smashed, may we become the highest quality, no matter what difficulty, to give thanks. We believe we are victors. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the incredible promise of love from God. My Father, He wants to make me into the highest quality. That's why He's given me this trial. By forced repentance, may we endure to the end and receive the blessings of a King. Those who are determined to receive this blessing, no matter what trial or trouble, those hearts that are determined to live joyfully, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.